Hey guys, this is Colin Warren from the Kooks in Space Structures team, and I'm putting together this video to give you guys a sense of um, all the various skills you're going to have to learn as part of being on the Kooks in Space Structures team. Um, I guess kind of give it a little bit more, kind of a higher level view of where they all come into play, um, or at least how they get applied when you're working in the Structures team. Uh, so I figured I would do this uh, by you giving you an example of how I made the this aluminum model for thermal uh, and the hopes that talking through the processes that went into making this, you can see, oh, um, okay, like first step one, why they haven't we learned SolidWorks? Oh, this is where it comes into play to making a model like this, to using CAM, water jetting, speeds and feeds, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll just talk through the process of how I made this uh, using the skills we've uh, documented and listed for you guys to learn uh, so we can give you guys some context about why you're learning them. So. The first thing I had to do to start out even to make this model uh, is to come up with a plan about what this model looked like. Um, we already actually had models uh, because this one is actually just an iteration or simplified version of one of our uh, models we're making or CubeSat models we're making for the actual launch uh, that you can see here. Uh, this one being out of PLA obviously uh, because we have a requirement to make it out of aluminum this couldn't go on the flight. Uh, but we ended up having to do uh, is it, we would have to take one of the, we would, took this I took this model uh, poured it into SolidWorks got rid of a lot of these big gaping holes and everything like that um, as one of the design requirements thermal the thermal team needed uh, was to have a lot of these faces closed up uh, so they can mount all of their uh, MLI or their thermal insulation on it uh, so once I knew okay that's the requirement they needed it needs to kind of look like this form factor took this model, which was a SOLIDWORKS model, opened it up on my end, I took out a lot of the, a lot of the whole features. As you see, this is flat. A lot of the interesting contours and everything like that are out. Uh, and just really simplified it in SOLIDWORKS. So, once I had the SOLIDWORKS model made up, uh, using you know different uh, sketches, uh, removing different cuts and everything like that, I had to figure out, okay, now that I have the model, how do I make it into aluminum? Uh, if you're making it into something like PLA or ABS or any other 3D printing material, it's pretty easy. You just like you know save as you express an STL and then you put it in your favorite slicer program. You just hit print on your 3D printer and you're done. Um, currently, because we don't have access to 3D printers that can do aluminum, uh, we have to use a couple different machines to make our given satellite out of aluminum. So the first part we ended up using, at least I ended up using for this model, uh, was a machine called a water jet. What a water jet ends up doing, as it it's just like a, you can think of it as a really, really, really powerful water hose uh, that shoots uh, water and a tiny bit of what's called grit or sand, uh, and the sand is what cuts through metal and gives it that your it gives the model uh, that really finished look, cuts it out, and I think cut up to about like an inch, the one we have. Um, so it's it's really great. The upsides of using water jets is that they're really fast <laughs> uh, comparatively to other methods of machining. Uh, they're pretty exact. Uh, they do leave a little bit of surface roughness, uh, so that's a problem, uh, which it is for us in certain regards. Uh, that might be you might have to go in and finish it a little bit, but for at least for the thermal model, because all they need is just like a big block of aluminum in kind of the shape of a cube set. I figured okay, uh, for two of the side panels, I could do that. The reason why I decided two of the side panels could use a water jet is because all the features that you look on here, uh, they can be cut through. I'm not going to go ahead and disassemble the model, uh, but basically what you can imagine the water jet doing is, oh actually, I think I have a scrap one here. Yeah, so here's a bad one that ended up coming out. Uh, but basically what this, this one is sitting in a stock of aluminum, uh, and then the water jet comes in and cuts through all of it, so it comes in and cuts through, cuts the little slots out. And then you pop it out, and then you have the little side panel here. Uh, so I ended up making two of these, uh, so I could slap them onto the side, and that ends up making the side panels. Uh, the upside, again, super exact. The downside of using a water jet is it can only cut all the way through a given material. If you have anything, like for instance, like if you look at this model, not sure how well you can see it, but you have these little parts down here that have these little pockets. Uh, these little kind of cutouts, uh, they don't go all the way through, but they just kind of sink in a bit. You can't do that on the water jet. All a water jet can do is cut through material. 
Uh, so that's why I designed these two side panels for all the features there. Everything here had to be something that could just be cut all the way through. There could be no like interesting like little valleys or anything like that on the on the side panels. Uh, so that's what I did. Uh, so I took the two side panel parts that I made because you export a SolidWorks like assembly into different parts. I took the two side, I like actually just the one side panel because it's just this model, put it over twice. I exported it as a DXF and then we uh, imported it into, onto our water jet and then just cut out the part. So then we got the two side panels. Uh, so that's how those two came about. Uh, next, once we had the two side panels done, we had to make the top and bottom panels. Now for the top and bottom panels, they couldn't really be cut through. Uh, as well, one, I wanted to try testing the limits of the machine, another machine we have at, at our, in our um, toolkit to cut out aluminum. I wanted to see how well that was going to work. Uh, and then in addition, uh, I wanted to give Thermal a little bit more room to mount um, any electronics they have and everything like that. So the model part you see here, and I think I have something that's similar here that I'll show you. Uh, part you see down here looks a lot like something like this by itself. Uh, it doesn't have this little X feature here. Um, basically, yeah, so we had to make two of these and then that would make up the top and the bottom part of the thermal model. So to do this part, because as you're noticing, if I tried to cut all the way, you couldn't do this feature that you see here. Um, if I tried to take a water jet and cut through, it can't do varying depths. It can only just cut straight through. So you ended up having to use what's called a CNC mill to do this. Uh, I ended up using a Carbide Nomad 883 to do this, uh, to do all the, the cutting out. Uh, but before you even get to the cutting out part, you need to actually take your part in SOLIDWORKS and program, and you have to create a program for the machine that cuts it out, telling it how it needs to cut out this part. And uh, that programming process is called CAM. Uh, you, in SOLIDWORKS, I use a CAM program called HSMWORKS. Uh, so once I had my part, it looks like something kind of like this in SOLIDWORKS, I said, okay, I have the part, now I need to open up my little extension called HSMWORKS. I need to program the bit uh, that comes in and cuts out as that's how a CNC machine works. If you want to do more research on that. Um, then I did the little programming, cut out all the contours, everything interesting like that. Uh, so once I have done my camming done, uh, then I said, okay, I can take my cam program, which is usually in a G code format, and I put that G code format onto the mill itself, and then the mill does all the little, does the little process, does all the little cuts and processes uh, that ends up making the final part. Uh, so I did the, ran that process twice, and that was what got the top and the bottom part. So now that I had all four parts cut out, uh, now I had the problem of make, seeing how I could get the holes drilled out. Because uh, one problem, as you're noticing here, uh, especially for all these machines, is they can only do three axis machining. So that means the whatever, actually, I think, uh, for most of the machines, they can do no more than three axis machining. Uh, so they can only go the bit, at least in the C case in the CNC mill, it can only go down, it can only do cuts down, up, left, and right. If I have like a hole here, the bit, the, given the machines we have, the bit can't turn over and cut like here. Um, there are five axis machines that can do that. Uh, but for the ones we had, we only had three access machines. Uh, so what ended up happening is after I had two of these parts created, I actually had to pull it out and manually drill press all the holes that you see here. So we did that pretty much everywhere for the top and bottom panel. Uh, for the holes on the side panels, because it's I could drill, I could water jet them out from the top down, end up having those water jetted out, so that made that part easy. Uh, but for the rest of them, I had to hand drill, hand tap, um, I will say the there's a nice getting a good pick, yeah, getting a good pair of calipers really helps uh, me figure out okay where exactly these holes need to go. Uh, and then there's a little trick you can do where if you have a pair of metal calipers and you've measured out how far or where you need like what how far along a given feature you need to cut, uh, you need to drill a hole, make a mark or something like that. You can take your calipers and you can actually scrape one end. Uh, so if I can do a basic tutorial this. So if I wanted to measure, let's say, yes, I'll just say 6.3 millimeters. So if I want to put a 6.3 millimeter mark, um, you could take your caliper, place it here, hold it steady, and then you just kind of push down on the front and you scrape along it, and it would make a little line uh, that marks up the 6.3 millimeter mark. Uh, but you want to use metal calipers if you can to do that trick. 
Uh, so I did that trick, uh, got the holes pretty much approximately lined up where I wanted them to. Uh, and then for centering, because uh, I can figure out, okay, this is where I need to drill the hole in this direction. Uh, but now I need to figure out, okay, I want it centered. Where exactly does that mark look? So I kind of ended up eyeballing it. Um, I just took the drill press and just drilled in like a very tiny amount so I could see if where the hole would end up going. And if the hole seemed like a little bit off-centered, uh, or the little drill mark end up being a little bit off-centered, I would move it over a bit, do another little drill mark until it looks centered, and then I went through. So that's end up, that's end, that's how I ended up drilling the holes more or less exactly where they needed to go. Uh, some of them ended up being a little bit off. So uh, the the cube set, if you end up grabbing it or if you <laughs> place it down, ends up being a little bit uh, lopsided. It's not quite square. It might be a little hard to see in the camera. Uh, but that's because on this top on the bottom panels, some of the holes are drilled a little bit above the center line, a little bit below. So that's going to screw up how it's assembled together. Uh, but yeah, that was basically. From, I guess from top start to beginning, all the processes that went into making this metal model. And that's why we want you guys to learn all these different processes. So when we say, okay, we, guys need, you to, we need you guys to learn SOLIDWORKS, uh, that's because we need you guys to make the model uh, that at least make, even come up, with, come up with the first, come up with the design for the model that you're gonna make. Uh, once you've made it in CAD or in SOLIDWORKS, then you have to CAM or use a program like HSM Works uh, to program a CNC mill machine to create parts like this. Uh, so you can create it out, out of aluminum because, yeah, it, you can't quite cheaply 3D print stuff like this yet with our budget. Uh, so you use a CAM process for parts like this. You take that CAM file, G code, take the G code file, you put it into a CNC mill. Uh, that's where we have you guys learn a little bit about how to use a CNC mill, speeds and feeds, stuff like that. Uh, so you can learn. So that way you can do that part of the process and you can fully complete uh, this shelf. Uh, then we learned how to teach you guys, it shouldn't be too hard, but just more of the process of, okay, here's how you drill holes. Uh, and then we teach you guys how to tap holes. So you can make little threaded holes in there so we can take little bolts and we can screw them in. Uh, that's what, it's keeping this whole thing together. So that's why I teach you guys tapping. And then finally, we can we teach you guys a little bit how to use a water jet uh, or have you guys go through the process of water jetting. Uh, so that way, if you guys do have access to one, uh, you can know, oh, okay, I have this file. There's only like, you can, I, all the parts, all the features on it can be cut through. I don't have to have um, th these different little pockets or varying features uh, with different depths. So I can create a DXF file from my SOLIDWORKS part for the, like a given part from the assembly. I can export it, put it in the water jet, and I'll cut it out, and I can create that feature. Uh, so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of like a over level or high level view about where all these different tools and processes come in into making a uh, CubeSat like this or even like a regular structure in general. Uh, so yeah, I guess hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of incentive to go and learn all these different processes or at least master certain components of each. Uh, that way uh, you can at least be, you can at least uh, have an intuition about how to make certain parts uh, of the CubeSat, of your CubeSat along the path uh, or if you're super ambitious, you can learn how to make the full thing from scratch, from CAD to machining it out to water jetting it out. Uh, so yeah, that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is Colin Warren again, Colin Warren again from Kooks in Space. Uh, catch you guys on the flip side.